Hey, I'm Rod Aaron Gammons from Road to Light, and today we're going to be answering the question, what is high-speed sync and when would I use it? All cameras have an internal sync speed, which is the ability of the camera to synchronize a flash to the shutter release. If the camera doesn't synchronize the flash to shutter release, what you end up finding is you have a black bar across a portion of the image. For most cameras, the internal sync speed is either around 125th of a second or 250th of a second. In order to synchronize an external flash at a shutter speed faster than your camera's internal sync speed, you'll need both a camera, trigger and receiver that are capable of high-speed sync. What high-speed sync allows you to do is if you're working in daylight conditions outside, for example, and I wanted to achieve an aperture of, say, 1.4, both my subject and background would be overexposed with a slower shutter speed and a wide open aperture. In order to limit the amount of light falling on the camera sensor, I need to shoot at a faster shutter speed if I want to retain 1.4 and have that nice isolation, my subject to the background. To do that, I need to shoot at a fast shutter speed. The only way of shooting over 250th of a second, for example, which would be most cameras' upper limit of an internal sync speed, would be to do that in high-speed sync. The Rode Light AOS is a high-speed sync strobe capable of up to 1 8,000th of a second. And therefore, in an outdoor condition, I could shoot at 1.4, expose for the ambient conditions so the clouds in the sky look fantastic, and then use the strobe of your AOS to ensure that your model, who would otherwise be underexposed, is in fact perfectly exposed because of the high-speed sync nature of the AOS. The other advantage of high-speed sync is when you want to freeze frame action. For example, an ice cube falling into a glass, and you want to capture every single movement of that cube on the way down. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that because AOS is a continuous light, I could shoot at any shutter speed I want to with AOS in continuous mode and not have to worry about high-speed sync. The only disadvantage of that is that AOS is not as bright as it is in flash mode, where flash mode is a whole extra stop brighter. To access the flash menu, I simply click both knobs at the same time, go to the menu that says flash. I click the right knob to go into the menu and the left knob to come out. So I'll click in there now. This is the duration of the flash. Our recommendation is to leave it set to a 50th of a second. Anything faster than that, so for example, 125th or 250th, will automatically be captured. If I click and hold the right hand knob, I can adjust flash power. Max is the most powerful mode. We suggest leaving it in that mode, but you can adjust it to half, quarter, uh, or multiples of the modeling light level. So for example, eight times the current modeling level or 16 times the current modeling light level. If I use the left hand knob, I can adjust the power of the modeling light. Now, this is intentionally less bright at 100% in modeling light than it is in continuous mode. So it's more comfortable for the model and it also preserves battery life um, because you don't need the modeling light to be quite as bright. If I click and hold the left hand knob, I can adjust the color temperature that the flash is gonna flash at um, so, for example, if I want daylight, I would recommend setting at 5,600. Tungsten, which would be more of a sunset setting, would be 3,200 Kelvin. And if you're somewhere in between, then around 4,400 Kelvin is a nice setting to be at. 